Hey now, what is up everybody? My name is Mike Brown, aka Review King MB, and this is my 31 days of horror movie reviews. And I just got done watching a film that has been on my list. And I don't just mean horror, but in general, on my list of movies to watch for quite a while. It's one of those horror films that I would hear about constantly for years, it felt like. I'm talking about Creepshow. Creepshow is a 1982 film that is a George Romero film. And at first, because I would hear about this movie, I've heard this film reference and I've heard what the movie at least consists of. The fact that it's an anthology film. So it's there's like five different horror stories with a prologue and epilogue. And so I went into this expecting that every story would be directed by a different director, or a horror director, or just anybody else. I was surprised to find out that no, George Romero directed all of these separate stories. And also all of them were written by Stephen King. Like they're short stories i guess written by stephen king so there's that now the prologue and also the epilogue you see this little boy who he's reading this creep show comic book and his father comes in and sees this comic book and sees the type of shit that's in it the fucked up shit that's in it it's apparently gross and disgusting and he flips out he even smacks the kid in the face and says what the fuck you know you can't read this shit and he throws it in the garbage and the boy is pissed he's angry and then we see that not only is the boy like i'm gonna fucking get you father the father by the way is played by tom atkins and and not only is the is the boy like I'm gonna get you, Dad. I'm gonna fucking get you. But you kind of that's where we get to see the stories that were in the comic that the boy was reading, and and that's what this movie is. You know, it's it's all of these stories. The first one is called Father's Day. Now here's a story where this family gets together, and apparently the father of the family. He died like seven years prior, and they all pretty much know that it was his daughter. Or is that the is that who they said killed her? Killed the father? I don't know, but they they pretty much know who killed him, and they're getting together. And in fact, Ed Harris, a very young Ed Harris, was in this part, and. Without any real explanation, a lot of these stories don't have explanations. And I know what this is. I kind of figured out fast what type of horror movie I was getting myself into. I'm not saying I needed, like, realistic explanations for what was going on. But I did, or I would have liked some sort of explanation. Even if it's like, hey, because of this curse, or because of this witchcraft, this is why... This happens because like in this story, the dead father just comes out of his grave and kills the woman that killed him. And then he goes back to the house and I guess goes to kill the whole family. And you're like, oh, OK, did he do it for revenge or I mean, he kept saying that he wanted his cake. So maybe it was mostly for that, too. The second story is uh, The Lonesome Death of Jordy Verrill, who is played by Stephen King himself. And there's a reason why Stephen King was not an actor, <laughs> even though I know he's appeared in some of his own movies. But yeah, he just plays this guy that finds this comet and he touches it and this green goo shit goes on to him. And this green goo shit starts to like grow a forest or grow leaves and even on him it starts to grow on his skin like leaves he, like he almost looks like his house and everything is turning into a poison ivy secret hideout and it just gets worse and worse until he ends up i mean fuck this guy looks like swamp thing after a while that one i was really not into i could have done without for a lot of reasons although there was one moment when stephen king turned on the tv and he started watching wwf which i mean like this is very early wwf this is before 
WrestleMania. This is before anything. And I don't know if the whole point of that was that only hillbillies and rednecks like wrestling, because like it's just that's kind of what it felt like. I don't know, because I watch wrestling, so maybe I got a little too close to that. The next story, we have something to tide you over. Now, as I said, a lot of the writing for this, I think, is kind of lame. A lot of the acting is pretty questionable. And this whole entire movie is two hours long, which is way too long. Horror movies, unless the story is really substantial and worth it, and if I'm really invested in the characters and really invested in what I'm watching, two hours is too long. And this you know, this whole movie, I think there's a couple stories that we either could have taken out or made shorter. This one probably has the most interesting scenario where we see Leslie Neeson. <laughs> yes, Leslie Neeson. He is upset because his wife is cheating on him with this other guy. Um, and so uh, the other guy, by the way, is played by Ted Danson. This came out like right before Cheers started so before ted danson became a name before ted danson starred in cheers and actually like became well known he was in this shitty movie i'm sorry i know some people love creep show but the whole scenario is pretty wacky so leslie neeson he wants revenge for his wife cheating and for this guy who's also partaking in the affair of course right and so he goes to the guy's house and he he says hey i have uh, my wife locked up or I, I I've taken her and so the only way that you can see her and protect her and be there for her is if you come with me so of course he goes with him because <laughs> it's like oh no there's no way that this is a trick or a plan and he brings him to the beach he tells him to get into a hole that was dug in the sand and yes, Ted Danson is kind of being like, oh, I don't trust you, or how do I know that she's not already dead, or, or, or I don't want to do this, but Leslie Neeson just is a smooth talker, or he's just able to somehow convince him that he's telling you the truth. Of course, he also takes out a gun, but still, it's like, well, if you're going to kill me anyways, you might as well just fucking shoot me, because there's no way I'm just going to willingly walk into a hole. And he even, like, digs... <laughs> Puts the sand over his own body. This is uh, so absurd. In fact, the cut away from him starting to put sand into the hole to the cut of he's buried in sand all the way up to his fucking neck. It's comical. It's laughable. So that's when it's revealed that uh, Leslie Neeson, he also has the wife on a different side of the beach buried up to her neck in the same exact way. He takes on a TV and shows... Ted Danson, her, and like, hey, but basically the both of you are going to drown. So good luck. Have fun. And he bounces. And then after the two get overtaken by the water and the current, and I don't really know what happens. This is another example of like, what happened here? <laughs> you know, like I can't explain it. I can't even try to think of what's the explanation. But the two come back to life but they're like water zombies and they go to leslie neeson's house and they then they take him and they bury him in the sand as well i'm just like all right great like whenever you have and this is me overthinking i know but whenever you have a situation like this whenever somebody dies and then comes back to life to get revenge and kill somebody else what's to stop the person that they're killing to then just, they also come back. You know, it's just like, is this going to be a revolving cycle? Or is it only allowed for the first couple or the first people to be the ones that come back? And anyone that they end up killing the same way, for some reason they don't come back? I don't know. I'm thinking way too hard about this. The next story was somewhat interesting in concept as well. It was called The Crate. And you have this husband... Bill, I think his name is, he's he's not happy, he's miserable, his wife treats him like shit, talks down to him, he keeps having, he keeps daydreaming about wanting to kill her, which is kind of hilarious, and then one day, his friend finds this crate, and in this crate is, I don't know if it's supposed to be a werewolf, or if the costume of the werewolf just like his face didn't look that good, so it was supposed to be a werewolf, but it didn't really look like a werewolf, 
whatever it was, this is a creature that eats people. And so the husband now thinks, you know what? Before I try to clean this mess up, before I try to get rid of this creature and help my friend out who just went through a fucked up thing that he saw, the creature killed somebody in front of him, I'm going to use this creature to eat my wife. I'm going to trick my wife into coming over here so that the creature eats her. And, and so, yeah, you know, and then he gets rid of the crate. But then, of course, the crate breaks and we don't really know what happens there. I'm assuming that the creature is going to come back and kill everybody. Oh, well. And then we had a last, a fifth and final story. And honestly, we could have done without this one. This one I didn't find all that interesting. It was, just, it was this dick face guy who treated everyone like shit. He had a cockroach problem in his apartment, but everyone that he called basically just blew him off and was like, fuck off, dude, you're an asshole. And for some reason, more and more cockroaches just started to come out of the walls and come out of holes and just fill the apartment. And eventually the cockroaches just kill him. How do they kill him? I don't know. I guess they go inside of his body because we cut away to a dummy where the cockroaches just come out of his mouth and break out of his chest. And and it's like, okay, look, don't get me wrong. I had some of the heebie-jeebies and I was feeling itchy and I was scratching because cockroaches are really gross, especially when it's that many of them. So there was that. But as a story, I just was like, this was a waste of time. This was just, you just wanted to pad this out to be two hours. Whereas it could have easily have been an hour 40, for example. And so, yeah, I, I love the concept of anthology movies, especially when it comes to the horror. I think this movie, maybe if you were a kid, if I was a kid, if I had seen this movie when I was a kid, I probably would have fonder memories of it or it probably would have hit me a little harder if this was some of the first type of horror stuff I had ever seen. But ultimately, I kind of was bored. Ultimately, I, I didn't really care as much for this although tom savini does the makeup and special effects obviously it's practical it looks great tom savini is one of the best to do it in horror and also the music the score i thought was phenomenal the score was made by john harrison and there's something about especially in the story of something to tide you over where that just I, there is a song that they play Score wise, during that story that is so creepy and so eerie, great tension and mood. And I wish that the whole movie overall was better to match the energy that some of the score has here. Who knows? Maybe I might use that score for my own horror project. Oh, I'll get copywritten. God damn it. Anyways, guys, let me know in the comments below if you too have seen Creep Show. Have you grown up on it? Maybe you enjoy it more than I have, or maybe you agree that eh, it's not that great. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Later! Get switched, fuck them with raptors Kill them and I drill them and I'm sipping on the four Oh, it's about a whole entire motherfucking torso Oh, what a rush, shit for some more blow Let the bitch bleed and I'm making a porno I'ma keep it going a few times before I pass out Wake up in the morning, realize I'm blacked out, yeah